Join us on an engaging journey as we explore the world of pressure vessel manufacturing. In this video teaser, we focus on the revolutionary method of filament winding. Discover three distinct winding methods, planar, geodesy, and isotensoid, each with its own advantages. Learn how to simulate filament wound pressure vessels using the Abacus GUI or Python scripting for a customized approach. Explore the TSI heel and puck criteria for assessing damage in composite structures, including the use of UMAT subroutine. Whether you are an industry professional or simply curious, this teaser provides a gateway to the intricacies of filament winding. Stay tuned for the full video release and unlock the potential of this state-of-the-art technique. Welcome to CAEAssistant.com. In this tutorial, we intend to simulate composite pressure vessels that have been made by different filament winding methods, such as geodesic. To do this, we will use the Abacus user interface and Python scripts. Also, we will use the UMAT subroutine to model damage in the composite. In this package, we will first explain the pressure vessels and the fiber winding patterns. Then we will explain the principles and important points in making a pressure vessel by filament winding method. In the next section, we will explain the planar method and examine the formulas for winding angle and thickness. Then we will follow the same process for the geodesic and isotensoid methods and get familiar with the principles of making a vessel with these methods. In the next step, we will examine the puck failure criterion and also teach how to use this criterion with the UMAS subroutine. And finally, we will compare the two methods of GUI and Python script that we used for the simulations. What are pressure vessels? Why should we simulate these vessels? First, to answer these questions, it is better to learn more about the types of these vessels, their importance and applications. Pressure vessels are containers designed to hold gases or liquids at pressure substantially different from ambient pressure. One of the most important things in studying pressure vessels is their shape. Pressure vessels are made with different geometries and shapes. The most common of them are cylindrical and uh, spherical vessels. Of course, cylindrical vessels are made in two ways, horizontal and vertical. Design and simulation of pressure vessels are very important because they are used in various industries such as petrochemical, oil, storage, toxic uh, gases and others. Also, there can be dangerous and fatal accidents have occurred in the history of their development and operation. For these reasons, we should study and simulate them. Different materials and different uses of pressure vessels, as well as the wide range of manufacturing technologies, have led to the creation of different methods for the manufacturing of pressure vessels. One of the widely used methods of producing pressure vessels, which is used to produce fiber uh, reinforced composite vessels, is the filament winding method. In this method, first bundles of filaments that are placed together pass through the resin bath and then wound on rotating mandrel by a carriage that moves transversely. Now we want to talk about the design of pressure vessels. The most important parameters for designing a pressure vessel are the shape of the mandrel and the winding pattern of the fibers. As explained before, the shape of the mandrel is determined based on the type of application, the manufacturing method and other design principles. On the other hand, the winding pattern can affect the slippage of the fibers on the surface of the mandrel. The main reason for the slippage of the fibers from the surface of the mandrel is the presence of resin. This figure shows a mandrel and a small part of the dome surface and the geometry of the fiber path. 
In this part, if we perform a force analysis at any point using a tangential and normal coordinate system, we will have a force vector called FR acts on the fiber towards the center of curvature. Finally, by equa uh, equating equations 14 and 17 and substituting the BW from equation 13, a quadratic uh, equation in op is obtained and by solving it, we get T. Well, now we intend to simulate a, a filament wound pressure vessel using a, a MATLAB code and Abaca software. To do this, we first draw the vessel and divide its doom into equal parts. Note that due to the uh, symmetry, we only model a part of the vessel and also in this vessel, the doom part follows the ellipse equation. To divide the doom of the vessel into different sections and determine the winding angle and thickness in each section, we use a MATLAB code and then perform a simulation using the graphical user interface or GUI of Abacus. Here you can see the dimensions of the vessel. For example, the total length of the vessel is 1000 mm. In this simulation, two materials are modeled. First, composite materials are modeled using the T side heel criterion, and the vessel door is modeled as a steel. To model steel, we only use elastic properties. Also, the internal pressure of the vessel is 10 MPa and we consider the mesh size as 5 mm. To start solving this example, we first need to examine the MATLAB code. But before we examine the code, it is better to examine its flowchart to have a better understanding of it. In this code, we first create a function. As you know, in this part of the function, you need to specify the output variables such as x, r and phi. Then we set the name of the function and enter the input of the function in this section. To determine the input of the function, we use the X array. After defining the function, we specify the required inputs that are taken from the user and assign a name for each variable. First, A is the major A axis of the ellipse and M is the ratio between the diameters of the ellipse. By knowing A and M, we can determine B, which is the minor axis of the ellipse. The other received parameters are as follows. First, we change the scale factor to 1 and remove the edges from the part. Also, we can use the ODB display options to display the whole vessel. All the variables that we specified in step module can be seen here. First, let's see the stress results. Now, displacement results. TSI heel and TSI wool criteria. After examining the planar winding pattern, we now want to examine the geodesic winding pattern. As you know, geodesic winding is a type of helical winding. In this pattern, when the fibers uh, are laid on the mandrel, they tend to move toward the geodesic curve. The geodesic curve is the shortest distance along the curved surface. In this winding pattern, the radii of the reservoir inputs must be equal. One of the advantages of this method is the lack of dimensional limitation. This figure shows some examples of geodesic winding. When the fibers are wound on the mandrel due to the shape of the mandrel and the decrease of the radius in the dooms, the fibers pile up on each other and cause an increase in thickness in the dooms. This increase in thickness is so much that it must be taken into account in the simulations. To obtain the thickness in the dooms, equation 26 must be used. This equation is obtained by assuming constant number of winding bands in the cylinder and doom. In this relation, Tn is the thickness of the doom and T0 is the thickness of the cylinder. 
Well, now we intend to simulate a pressure filament wound vessel with geodesic pattern using a Python script and Abacus software. This Python script allows us to perform this simulation automatically. We only need to enter the inputs and the simulation is performed automatically. And there is no need to perform the simulation process in Abacus software. In this workshop, we will examine the Python script line by line. In this simulation, due to the symmetry, only a, a portion of the vessel is simulated to reduce the computational time. Here you can see the dimensions for the vessel. For example, the length of the cylindrical part is 500. Well, now let's see the Python script and we are going to explain it line by line. But before that, let's see how these scripts are made. There are several methods. The first method is that you have to write a script yourself line by line. But there are two other ways to create these scripts by using Abacus software. Here we explain the code line by line. From line 40 to 52, the Abacus modules are imported. These imports are mandatory and unchangeable for any Python script used for Abacus. In the next section, we need to get all the inputs needed to simulate the vessel from the user. These inputs include cylinder radius, cylinder length, ratio of ellipse di diameters, height of a conical part, revolve angle, winding angle in cylinder, helical winding thickness in cylinder, hoop winding thickness in cylinder, fiber thickness, fiber bundle width, mesh size, pressure in vessel, and finally a backus file directory path. All this information is received from the user and stored in a variable called A1. When the code is run, the, uh, the getting inputs process from the user is done by the get inputs command. Here you can see all the outputs that we specified. For example, you can see stress or displacement. Also, you can display the whole model as you see here. You can remove these edges from here. You can check the other outputs such as TSI heel, TSI Wu and RF. You can also see the value of each output in the legend. In this way, we could simulate composite pressure vessel filament wound by geodesic method without using modulus of Abacus software. Now, you can do the simulation automatically only by entering the necessary information. Now, in this section, we want to examine the isotensoid pattern. This winding pattern has no difference with the geodesic pattern. However, in this method, two conditions must be met. First, the pressure must be tolerated only by the fibers. And second, all the fibers must tolerate the pressure equally. We know that such assumptions will not happen in real situations, so we only accept these conditions analytically. These conditions cause the doom shape to change. So, the difference between isotensoid winding and geodesic is the doom contour. Now, we have to find the isotensoid. But as we said, we need to find the doom contour for using this pattern. To do this, we need to consider the two conditions that I mentioned earlier in the study of thin wall tank relations. By doing this, we can once again calculate the winding angle and thickness in the doom and also find the doom contour. Due to the time-consuming and complicated nature of this work, I will only explain the final equation that is used to find the doom contour. By putting the value of x in equation 27, you can find the doom contour of the tank in the isotensoid winding. Here are uh, bar 1 and R bar 2 are calculated using equation 28 and 29 respectively. To simulate the vessel made by the isotensoid pattern, we will use a Python script. The conditions of the simulation are as the same in the previous workshops. Here you can see the dimensions related to the vessel. All the information needed to draw the vessel is mentioned here. The materials used for the composite and also the, the metal part of the vessel are the same as before. Also, the internal pressure and mesh size of the vessel have not changed. In the isotensoid uh, script, due to the many similarities to the geodesic script, I will present the explanations faster. First, as before, we receive the required information from the user and then we find the winding angle in the cylinder. 
After that, we create a sketch and we draw the cylindrical part. In this pattern, instead of using the ellipse equation, we have to use the equation that I mentioned in the slides and draw the doom part. The starting point of the doom is the point where the doom connects to the cylinder. Also, we can remove the edges. All outputs are, that are specified can be seen here, such as tension, tsi hill, tsi wu, displacement, and other outputs. In this way, we were able to simulate the isotensoid winding method. For better modeling of composite materials in a vessel, it is better to use an appropriate failure criterion for composites. Puck failure criterion. The Puck failure criterion is one of the most famous and best criteria for modeling failure in composite materials. This criterion can effectively identify the fracture mechanism in lamina composites. This failure criterion can identify fiber failure and damage in both tension and compression states. Also, it is capable of modeling interfiber failure in both tension and compression states. In the event of failure in the composite during analysis, this criterion provides us with new elastic and shear modulus and reducing the composite properties. To use the Puck failure criterion, we need to be familiar with its equations and formulations. First, we study the Puck failure equations for fiber failure under tension. To determine fiber failure under tension using the Puck failure criterion, equation 30 must be used. If the value of this equation is greater than or equal to 1, fiber failure under tension has occurred. This equation can be used only when sigma 1 is greater than or equal to 0. From now on, to make it easier to use equation 30 can be called the FFT equation. Epsilon 1t is the strain under tension in the fiber direction. Epsilon 1 is the strain in the fiber direction. Then MUF12 represents the Poisson's ratio of fibers. The EF1 represents the modulus of elasticity in the fiber direction. The M sigma F is the mean stress magnification factor. And sigma 2 is the stress in the transverse direction. In workshop 4, in addition to using a Python script, we want to model the behavior of the composite material using the UMAT subroutine. The dimensions and shape of the vessel that we want to simulate are the same as in workshop 2 and no changes are made to them. To model the composite material of the vessel using the Puck criterion and UMAT subroutine, we generally need these information. These are the inputs that the UMAT subroutine needs to use to model the Puck criterion for failure analysis. To model the metallic section, we use only the elastic modulus and Poisson's ratio as before. We will use 10 MPa pressure for loading and consider a mesh size of 5 mm. OK, now based on the explanations provided for the Puck failure criterion and UMAT subroutine, we want to implement this criterion in the UMAT subroutine. As explained before, first we must copy the UMAT interface from the VACUS documentation and paste it here. After that, we will add all the variables we made to the code and use them, including the E1, E2, NU12 and other variables. After this, we receive all the inputs that have been entered by the Abacus software through props and determine the name of each variable. For example, props 8 is the Poisson's ratio of the fibers. And now we run the script. After the job is completed, we can see the results. In the results section, in addition to the stress and displacement that we were previously seen, we can now see the value of state Vs. For example, you can see the value of state V1, which shows the value of the FFT variable. Or state V2, which shows the value of the FFC variable. 
Also here, state B6 specifies the value of DFFT because FFT had a value greater than 1, so DFFC here definitely has a value equal to 1. This indicates that in the red area, the fibers have been damaged in tension. Also, state B7 shows the value of DFFC, but because FFC has value less than 1, so the value of DFFC is 0, and this shows that the fibers have not been damaged in the in compression. In this way, we were able to use the path failure criterion to predict failure in the laminate. But now let's go and use the Yumatsa routine in the partitioning method that we use for planar twisting simulation. Here, we first need to delete the properties that we created for the composite. After that, we need to specify the number of deep war. Then we must enter the user materials according to the workshop information. Here we change the scale factor to 1. And now in the outputs we can see the values of state Vs.